Let's stop talking about distro right now and cover some basics. First, Linux distro don't run EXE or Windows installers. The reason they're called distribution is because they distribute the software for you, so you don't have to go to a random website, download and install stuff like a homeless person. The software distributed to you ranges from system utility like the desktop you're interacting with, Bluetooth manager you use to connect to your personal devices, to your personal use ones like Office and browser. They're all available inside the system official repository, so stop trying things you do on Windows. Second, if you decide to try out Linux, make a mental note that terminal is your friend, not enemy. For a lot of distributions, you don't necessarily need to use terminal, but almost all programs can be started from there. And once there is something wrong, it is easier to see the error message and start debugging. Finally, not all games can run properly on Linux. Even those gaming distro have limitations. Yes, the upside is that you don't have to look at the activation message from Windows or pay for the system. But be prepared to tinker with every single game you own. And check if your game is working on ProtonDB website before beginning your journey. Let's start with the software installation, with me emphasizing on this. Programs are compiled into binaries to be able to run on a system. And different systems use different binary format. EXE is the exclusive format for Windows. Same with MSI. They won't work on Linux, Mac OS, iOS, or Android. On Linux, you can download something called App Image and run them by double clicking. And sometimes there are installers which can be compiled into dot dash format, which you can run using terminal to install the program. But other than that, all the software formats require installation in different ways. The most common installer files are DEB for Debian and Ubuntu-based Linux, RPM files for Red Hat family distributions like Red Hat, OpenSUSE, and Fedora, Flatpak REF files for Flatpak which works on cross distributions. Now, let's talk about package manager and the software installation process on Linux. The most fundamental way to manage software on Linux is to use package managers. And different Linux families use different ones. On Debian and Ubuntu-based distributions, it is APT. On RPM-based systems like OpenSUSE and Fedora, it is Zephyr, RPM, and DNF. On Arch, it is Pacman. And Pacman is for Manjaro. Each package manager will only work on one specific Linux family. You cannot use apt command to install software on Fedora or vice versa with DNF command. Also, just like you can't use exe or msi to install programs on Linux, one package manager can only install one package type. DEB file can only be installed by distributions that come with apt like Debian, Mint, and Ubuntu. RPM files can only be installed by RPM, DNF, and Zebra commands on Red Hat, Fedora, and OpenSUSE. Arch's AUR repository is way more powerful than the other distribution's repository that I never knew there was a file extension available for it, other than compiling source code from AUR repository. To learn how to use each of them, it is always a good idea to read the official wiki and documentation from the distribution's website. The famous ones usually have a good guide on how to do things. What's more is a lot of them have good community forum where you can ask your questions. So let's forget about how you operate on Windows and embrace the Linux way. There are also several third-party package manager and repositories for a lot of modern distributions to use. Flatpak with FlatHub developed by the Fedora Foundation. Snap and SnapStore by Canonical, which is the company developing Ubuntu. And app images, which you can just download and run without installation. Enough with background. Let me show you a general way to game on a Linux distribution. First thing we need to worry about is the system installation. You could either use Rufus to burn the USB with the Linux ISO file, or look at this video and use Ventoy, which can boot up multiple ISO files in one USB drive, including Windows. Most of the installation are just answering questions, like disk drive, time zone, 
language, and user setup. I don't see anyone mentioning installation being the part of their issue, so I won't go into detail on this. I figured if you can install a program on Windows, you can make through a regular Linux distribution installation process. It's not a rocket science. Next is the NVIDIA. There are several approaches distributions are using when it comes to the NVIDIA driver. First one is from Pop! OS. It has a dedicated NVIDIA ISO to download. With this, you don't have to worry about anything during and after the installation. After you install the system, you're done. The second approach is used by Manjaro and some Arch-based Linux, where you can specify the NVIDIA driver when you boot up the live CD. When you use that option to start the installation, the system installer will take care of the rest. The third one is after the first time boot up, there will be either an initial setup process which includes a NVIDIA driver like my favorite immutable system, Vanilla OS, or a welcome program which contains the driver manager like Linux Mint. If you close the window too fast, there is a program called additional driver or driver manager to install it. The most tricky distribution to install a NVIDIA driver I can think of is Fedora, but nothing is unsolvable with a single search engine. You can install NVIDIA using RPM Fusion's wiki with several commands in minutes. It is always a best practice to update your distribution after the first time boot up. Most of the distributions will have a pop-up notification for that. This is to make sure your system has the most up-to-date packages before you use it. If you don't see the notification, you can always rely on our best friend, Terminal and Package Manager command. In the Debian Ubuntu environment, it is sudo apt update 2 ampersand sudo apt upgrade. In Fedora, it is sudo dnf update. In OpenSUSE, sudo zapper up. And Arch, sudo pacman dash capital S double Y and U. And on Manjaro, it is pamac update. Reboot after process is done. Now let's install Steam. Some distributions include it in their official repo. So you can install it directly using the package manager, like Mint and Pop! OS. You can do sudo apt install steam to install it. And then you can find it in the application menu to launch it. For all the people who want to learn, it is good to try out Flatpak. It works on all popular distributions. Just follow the guide on flathub.org to set it up and then Flatpak install Steam. There are several benefits of using Flatpak version. First is that Flatpak will install programs in an isolated environment which grant limited access from your main system for each program inside. So it is less likely you mess up the Flatpak dependencies when you upgrade your main system. Second, you have a unified experience using Flatpak no matter which distribution you are using. And third, it has a lot of proprietary software. So knowing how to use Flatpak is useful when using distribution whose philosophy is strictly restrained to open source, like Fedora. The downside is, if your host NVIDIA driver is updated, you need to update the Flatpak to reflect the new version, which is not hard to do. You just type in Flatpak update to do so. And the theme of the programs installed through Flatpak may not be the same as those on host system, given they are not running natively. Now let's log into Steam and start gaming. The first step is to enable Proton. Go to Steam menu, settings, and Steam play. Check the box which says enable Proton for all titles. Reboot Steam after that. Then you will be able to install all the supported titles in Linux. Next, check ProtonDB how to make the game work. For people playing Ubisoft games and see the error saying you play is not found, you can install Proton Tricks by either following this GitHub page or use Flatpak. Select the game, install application, find Uplay, and install it. You will be able to start the game after logging in. I hope now you can start enjoying some gaming. I want to add, learning Linux is fun. If you think hackers are cool, then you should know almost all of them know how to use Linux to some degree. Not only because Linux is a perfect place for a person to start learning how to hack things, it needs so much less resource to run 
that it can be installed on a small box like this and be carried around by those hackers and plug in wherever they see fit physically. If you want to know how to hack things, why not learn it while playing some games? I finally, I used to think gaming, watching movies, TV shows, reading novels, Reddit and shopping were the only entertainments I could find on a PC until I found about Linux. And it is so much more discreet and suitable for work than the others. People will have no idea what you're doing when you're just playing with the system in office. The perfect playmate when you don't want to work. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.